Space Mountain Library feature of the Poets in the Library series. I'm Mary Oishi, Poet Laureate of Albuquerque, and I'm so pleased to have gone around to so many different libraries throughout the city and now in the East Mountains in Tijeras and showcasing the wonderful library system we have as well as the many, many talented poets we have. Today's featured poet is Valerie Martinez. Valerie Martinez is the author of five books of poetry, one book of translations, and a chapbook of hybrid poetry and prose. Her poems have appeared widely in anthologies, journals, and magazines. Her most recent work, Count, is a book-length poem that grapples with the devastating effects of human-made climate change while recounting the magnificent wonders of the natural world. She was the Poet Laureate of Santa Fe and has lived in Albuquerque since 2005. Please welcome the wonderful Valerie Martinez. Thank you so much, Mary. And I wanna thank the city of Albuquerque and its public libraries and the Albuquerque Poet Laureate Program for this wonderful program. And congratulations to Mary and as she nears the end of her tenure as the Poet Laureate. So today I'm gonna to read several sections from the book Count, which just as Mary said, is a love letter to the natural world, as well as a warning about climate disruption and the things that we need to do to save our planet and really to save ourselves. Near the La Luz trailhead, 7,032 feet, we sidestep a thicket, Cylindropuntia imbricata, Drought tolerant, difficult to kill, stippled with bees and magenta blooms, the spaces it fills in the shadows of colossal boulders. We hike up southeast, watch a lip of brown creep up the foothills, inch by inch, below which the green world disappears. It's hard not to think akin, continuous, north and south, Greenland with its radical ice melt, the advance of the Atacama Desert, when I hear it, a brimming, a lapping, a sequence of little roars. In anticipation of the great flood, the god Tochopa tucked his young daughter, Pukehe, into a pinon trunk, hollowed and packed with nuts, tubers, healing herbs, hoping she would survive find another, repopulate the world. As the waters began to rise, he sang and prayed, held fiercely to the trunk, until he too and the woodpile and the houses and the village were subsumed, and all he could do below in the undertow was let her go. To the left of the trail, we spot the little nipple cactus, Mammillaria mycantha, tiny labyrinthine bowl ringed with white flowers. It grows and thrives between rocks, up and through asphalt cracks, with only a few drops of water. Boil the pulp, apply the mush for an earache. On the map, I see we are too far north for this variety, but I think I'm right elongated and scarlet fruit, golden anthers, now hot and dry enough at this elevation to take root. The black and yellow Atalopis zedeki, Panamanian golden frog, communicates via semaphore, waving at rivals and prospective mates. Ancient lore held that in death it turned to gold. Even one sighting predicts good fortune. Once saved from extinction by poaching, Zedeki now survives only in captivity. Rising heat in the mountains spurs evaporation, prompts cloud formation, decreases daytime temps, raises nighttime highs, igniting the deadly chytrid fungus, thickening its delicate skin, triggering cardiac arrest. In the next 35 years, 400 million climate migrants will flee coastlines and inland flooding, abandoning to water most of what they have in a strange reverse narrative. 
like the girl on the shore stepping back from the waves, as if caught on old VHS tapes when the ribbon gets stuck, forward, snapping back, forward and snap. And so we fixate on the corner of her white hem as it keeps making a perfect loop. Oh, 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 like the hot white trail of a sparkler. The mesmerized look on Annalisa's face as we taught her how to keep the stick circling in the dark till she sees it, the white continuous line. And when it burned too close to her fingers, the way she yelped, bolted to the nearest body of water, wine in the plastic cup of her grandmother, arc of the spark line from stick to liquid, the panic, the way my mother stretched the cup forward when, while leaning back, the sizzle of the spark as it broke the surface. The Yellowstone believe at one time the people hunted for sport, burned and cleared forests, stopped thinking of animals as their kin. And so Great Spirit let the smoke from their fires sit in the valley. They coughed and choked, but did not abandon their ways. Great Spirit sent thunder and rain, flooding roads and dwellings, inundating the fields. Only then did they turn to Spotted Bear, Medicine Man, who sent the youngest hunters for buffalo. For weeks, they slogged and searched. Along the way, fear forced them to transform their relationship with nature. They returned with the hide of a white bull who drowned in the floodwaters. Half starved, the people watched as Spotted Bear scraped and stretched the hide for hours and days until it grew the size of the whole of the valley. They lifted it and huddled beneath. Finally, the rain stopped and the sun emerged, shining hour after hour, day after day, shrinking the hide until all that was left was a patch that dissolved into a rainbow arch. And Spotted Bear declared that the people, no longer at odds with the earth, would survive. In 2013, hundreds of Miamians walked and chalked 26 miles of city streets a high water line where, by centuries end, three feet of sea level rise will remake the city into somewhere more like Venice, Jakarta, ancient Alexandria. For over 15,000 years, pilgrims have hiked the circular path beneath Mount Kailash, 52 kilometers, 52,000 meters, 2,047,000 244 inches. Ascending the peak at 21,778 feet is forbidden. Some complete the journey in 25,000 prostrations. At first, each rustle, footfall, bird song is precise. One can detail their singularities, contours, length. Then a blur comes on, defying separation, until one song rings through the body, mountain, air, and all breath seems one harmonic respiration. Pilgrims believe making the pass at Dolmala and all the way back will erase the sins of a lifetime. The adolescent goddess Hadanishte was encircled by creatures, thin, delirious, reflected in the tears of her people. She punished the tribe for negligence, put them to work reassembling the fragments of a disintegrating world. After much toil, each piece, cleaned and burnished, flashed a sliver of sunlight by day, moonlight by night, billions of which could not be looked at directly. In this way, they learned to be reverent and disciplined, to live on the edge of great balance, the sum of incalculable beauty. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valerie. Your book is marvelous, and it's such an important topic right now. So thank you so much. 
And now we're going to hear from Carmen Martinez. She is the circulation coordinator and library power professional here at the East Mountain Library. And we know from past features that the power professional is really a Renaissance person who can do everything there is to do in the library. So we're so pleased to have her. Please welcome Carmen Martinez. Hello, my name is Carmen Martinez and I am pleased to invite you to the East Mountain Library. The East Mountains began receiving library service in 1947 from the Albuquerque Bookmobile as part of the Albuquerque Public Library System. Service came every two weeks and delivered books to several schools and to one local general store. However, over the years, they cut the number of stops, decreased funding, and briefly stopped deliveries while the city searched for the $3,000 needed to keep the bookmobile running up to the mountain locations. Nevertheless, the county commissioners, and especially the local residents, were persistent and dedicated to getting a library built in the mountains. The land was donated by the village of Tijeras, and the building was funded by the general obligation bonds passed in 1992. Ground broke in 1993, and the library opened in October 1994. The building sits between the Tijeras Post Office and the Tijeras Historic Catholic Church on Old Route 66 in the heart of the village of Tijeras. Architect Isaac Benton designed the more than 13,000 square foot building, which won honorable mention in 1994 for the New Mexico Building Awards Energy Conscious Design. The metal sculpture on the outside of the building was created by Taos artists Juan and Patricia Navarrete as part of the 1% for the Arts Initiative. Serving patrons from Edgewood to Mountaineer, from Carnwell to Moriarty, the East Mountain Library truly meets the needs of a large reading community. I invite you to take a drive out to the mountains to come and visit the East Mountain Library. Thank you, Carmen. It's wonderful to learn about the history and the features of the East Mountain Library. And now we're gonna go and hear from the community poets for the East Mountain Library. I'm so happy to uh, be here with the community poets for the East Mountain Library. The first community poet is Philip Hughes Lewing. Philip Hughes Lewing is active with Off Center's writing group, having coordinated both of their recent zines, the Quarren Zine and the Vax Zine. He serves on the board at Off Center as treasurer. He also leads a weekly storytelling group at Art Street. You can see his recent artwork and writings on his website, philiphughesluing.com, can also see it in the, right behind him, one of his recent paintings. So please welcome Philip Hughes Lewing. These are three poems from 2018 through 2019 after I had a series of strokes and fell through all of the purported safety nets. One, Dias Array. Reflections pass through reflections in the window by the door as I sit listening to Baroque while other homeless men enter or exit. Rubino's Requiem, Italian, little is known about him. Two, in the backyard of the homeless shelter, great intellectual capacities warped into unusual shapes through the application of multi-transactional social pressures. Definitively limited, encouraging, empathic, at baseline, fundamentally impersonal, guarded, supportive, widely accepting of deviance from prevailing societal norms, defiant, chronically unsure, in every conversation, parsing benevolent, from malevolent, wandering lone neurons, leaping self-preserving synopses to make social connections. Three, in the Academy of Extraordinary Feral Intelligence, 
One might be surprised at how many advanced aerodynamic engineers live here at the mission, also wizard mechanics who can describe at length in logical detail with diagrams how to build a wide variety of spacecraft, either domestic or alien, and who can draw a map equally detailed for your flight to your destination within or beyond this galaxy where we now reside. These nuts and bolts folks are not employable as auto mechanics, too much, too costly the individualized training, then too much, too costly the individualized management, too big a bite out of quarterly profits for too long before monetary returns begin. Hence we allow, no, we commit these too many such individuals to sit stymied, uniquely talented, if perhaps quirky, surprisingly reliable to, to be counted on to show up for daily chores, for tasks, at least at first, before we start to waste our potential away along with the rest of our lives in charitable de facto hospice shelters, many with roofs that leak so much that we homeless who are being urged to pull upwards on our own bootstraps are left standing deep in thick enervating, exhausting, bureaucratic mud, getting steamed, some of us building up steam to power spaceships, to fly us far away, beyond your touch, outside of your world, beyond your laws, beyond the gravitational pull of your help. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. We don't often get the voices of someone who's experienced being unhoused. So thank you so much for that. Our next community poet is Sarah Danielle Rivera. Sarah Danielle Rivera is a Cuban Peruvian American artist, writer, translator, and educator from Albuquerque. Her poetry and fiction have appeared in the Left Anthology the Green Mountains Review, Storyscape Journal, Spoke, Seed Broadcast, The Bat City Review, The Breakbeat Poets, Volume 4, Latinx, Speculative Fiction for Dreamers, a Latinx anthology, and elsewhere. She was the recipient of a 2017 St. Botolph Club Emerging Artist Award, the winner of the 2018 Stephen Dunn Prize in Poetry from Solstice Magazine, and is a 2022 Tin House resident in speculative fiction. Her collection of translated poems by the Peruvian poet Blanca Varela, The Blinding Star Selected Poems of Blanca Varela, was released in 2021 by Tolson Books. Please welcome Sara Danielle Rivera. Thank you so much, Mary. I'm going to share three short poems with you all. And these poems all have to do with grief and loss, which I think many of us are experiencing right now. But my goal is that they also offer a little bit of hope and clarity. So this first poem, which is dedicated to my dad, is titled Sol. You named me for light. How we belong in the little spaces carved for us. Love tucking us into a walnut shell hollow where you take the tiniest brush and paint a Christmas star along the concavity. Some days I'm a pendulum on a planet that periodically loses gravity. Some days my light is spent. The light years require to travel back to myself too many. Since you died, I take tiny, redundant steps and, uh, and articles on which I predicate my survival. I want to believe death is only a pause in our continuous language. Stillness, but what it means is cosmic change. That you and I and the delicate spaces we drew into being between us constitute a light source that spears endlessly through a cloud break as hope lances inside spherical borders. Algodones. 
Someone I love died here. He died and I drove back to Albuquerque. Days later, another love, another death, a drive back to Algodones to pick up the ashes of the first. I can't go farther than this. On evening drives from Santa Fe, I repeat, I can't go farther than this, not even within the earshot of my heart. Barreliness of light. Windows stud the juniper hills at dusk, catch opposing sun. They become containment fields I can't reconcile. This place doesn't mourn, there is no vigil, only six small suns in the holding of my throat. The last poem is called Resuscitation. For a second, jackrabbit prints on snow, and you're in the frame again, lifting your arms to lower the sky for me. On this side of Bridge Street, we collect all the dead sunflowers, cut rot from an amaryllis bulb to end its dormancy. Our box turtle wakes thin in spring. Asleep all winter, she witnessed nothing. For a second, small as a strawberry, all my dead are alive. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Easy for me to see how you won all of those awards. Thank you so much for that beautiful poetry. Um, our next community poet is Patty Stevens. Patty Stevens wrote a series of poems about immigration to accompany the showing of Ev Evie Jones prints at Remark Gallery called There Are No Maps, Sanctuaries and Survivors. She is published in the 315 Experiment and shares regularly at Bosque Center for Spiritual Living, where she is music director. She will also have a poem in the upcoming Poets in the Libraries anthology, One Albuquerque, 100 Poems. Please welcome Patty Stevens. Thank you, Mary. This poem is called Flash Flood Rodeo and it was written um, on the solstice of 2022. Wind whinnies outside like a pony in its first storm, bucking up against the fence, the porch, the windows, whipping itself scared with its own tail, kicking down my door, making its way into my walls. Clouds, Barrel racing in from all directions, scented with burn, make their way in through the old frame windows like forest fire smoke to take shelter in these adobe walls. All elements need shelter, and I'm glad to share. There's a flood warning. So wind, cloud, and I threw a party. We tore the curtains down, broke the mirrors, tossed pillows in the bird bath, laughed loud enough to be arrested. Wind and clouds lit all the matches, burned all the candles, drank all the hooch, threw flour and sugar all around the kitchen just for fun. They piled on my jewelry, clomped around the house in my old high heels. They tried on my underwear and laughed so hard they peed themselves and fell down in a big spent pile. These flood warnings don't scare me. I have the wind and clouds, drunk, hunkered down in my bed, keeping me awake all night, bragging as they crowd me. Yeah, all hell broke loose, like the good old Los Tomases dance parties, where we'd move the furniture outside, feed the kids and the beast, and dance like wind pony and barrel racing cloud. This world can be and is so harsh. I won't make a list or categorize the terror. It lives around here, in the air, in my mop, in my hair. But I am older and I've learned to see the pendulum swing. The barrel racing clouds made it in on the back of wind pony and together we stuck out the flood warning of summer solstice 2022. 
and I ain't afraid of no flood warning. His next poems are um, an homage to my backyard. This one is called Blessed Neglect. Winter's tight stitches are busting loose with every warm sunrise. 68 degrees at 4 a.m. This is the weather that produces proud, plump peaches. The hard freeze of late January seems to have knocked some survival sense into the iris and Rosa de Castilla, the almond. They are still sleeping. Three cottonwood seedlings have taken up in the trashiest side of my yard, finding warmth and shelter in the crevice of a busted purple plastic pot. Glad I didn't clean up. Sometimes what you don't do is very important. I can tell it's going to be a luscious season. And this next one is called Where the Ocean Grows. And this was during COVID. The cottonwood trees in late March, tall, framed by blue, 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 and more empty blue. Bare branched lines crisscrossing the sky like a game of pickup sticks that landed vertically. Silent, motionless, still swollen with hopeful sap of spring. The cottonwood trees in mid-April, filled out in leathery green leaves outside my kitchen window, hover over spring greens and onions. I close my eyes and hear the ocean growing in the breeze, a series of waves that grow strong and then decay into ripples on my eardrums. So I take a big grain of coarse salt on my tongue and I just listen for hours, traveling to the coasts of my imagination. My heart feels the ease of having left my house. The breeze stops, my eyes open, and the ocean is cottonwood again outside of my kitchen window. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Wow, the ocean is cottonwood again. Huh? <laughs> Very nice. Our next community poet and our last one of the day is Joanna Juba Omiche Clayton is a griot, a storyteller in the West African tradition of using story as a tool for healing, educating, empowering, and affirming her community. Throughout her career, Ms. Clayton has been awarded many honors that reflect her devotion to improving the lives of the communities she serves. As for her poetry, Ms. Clayton says, sometimes my stories become poetry as is the case with her first poem, Wake Up Dancing. Please welcome Juba, Joanna Juba Omiche Clayton. This poem is called Wake Up Dancing. I'm gonna wake up dancing to myself. This self with its nappy hair and ashy elbows, this self that is the blues. The blues, my testimony to not running away from what is. The blues. You look, took a long time coming, you tell it like it is, witnessing good bucket, low down, dirty, coarse, ill manner, tell the truth blues. You are my way of getting through another day. I celebrate the birth of names like Sippy and Ma and Muddy Waters and, and Joe Blue, who have watered my mouth with their sweaty brows and wet handkerchiefs, who have made my eyes 
dance with those red suits and low cut dresses and healthy bodies. I celebrate the strength that comes pouring out of those notes into my ears, into my blood, into my soul. Make me strong blues. Make me strong like Bessie who created her own province and made herself queen. Make me strong like Billy who could take you to hell and back on one note. I take me back what was given. What was given to Memphis Minnie and Big Mama and, and Coco Taylor, free agents. Gladys Bentley, free agents. Corsets off, hair bobbed, gin at the hip. They sang their freedom. I want what you gave them, what's mine, my river the blues that we took out of the back room and put up front, the blues that came from nothingness, from want, from desire. Blues might not make you happy, but make you free. Thank you so much, Juba. As you may or may not know, besides being Poet Laureate from uh, 2020 to 2022, I am also a blues DJ and have been for many, many years. So that is the perfect poem to end this whole series of Poets in the Libraries. I appreciate all of the poets who have read during this series for today's feature from Valerie Martinez, the featured poet, through to Juba, uh, Omiche, Clayton, and all, all of the poets today, and through each feature. If you have not watched all of the features, you can go back and watch them on the One Albuquerque YouTube channel they're also up on the library's websites. So thank you so much for coming on this poetic journey with us through the pandemic and through the various neighborhoods of Albuquerque and now even the East Mountains where we conclude this series. Thank you again so much. And here's to poetry, write it, share it, publish it or read it or both and have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope this poetry made your day even more special. My name's Mary Owishi. Thank you so much.